Hey, Holistic Health Crusaders, Dr. Ren hello, here hello, with hello. Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? I'm great. How are you, Dr. Ren? I'm amazing. So I was just visiting the Blue Mosque today here in Istanbul, Turkey, and while I was walking down the street, Sammy was out there and said, huzz, 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 or something to me, <laughs> and I said, how you doing? And kept walking. And he said, oh, you're, you're American or English, you speak. And he goes, and we're still, like, my girlfriend and I are down the street. And he's like, where are you from? And I'm like, Jersey. And he's like, me too. <laughs> so you've been in New Jersey and actually own a rug uh, warehouse in New Jersey? Indeed, I do. Actually, it's so that we have started our business in the States 14 years ago. But it, we started actually down in Texas, in Houston, but we have decided that it's better to have actually two warehouses, one on the east and one on the west, so we have now one in Jersey and the other one is in San Francisco Bay Area. I hear ya, and we were just having a great conversation about being grateful and how to tell the difference between Persian and Turkish rugs, and I just love for my viewers to know if you'd explain. With my pleasure. Uh, the easiest way actually to give you an idea about this is that we have this image in front of us. The thing is, this is the ABC of handmade rugs. To tell the differences between a Turkish rug and a Persian rug, you have to look at this image. Is that a loom? It is a picture, an image of a loom, and it is like this. To build a loom, we need three construction parts, which are the warps, the wefts, and the knots. There are still today 23 different countries in the whole world where they produce handmade rugs. 22 of them are using the Persian system and Turkey is the only country where we do use the Turkish system. So what is here the difference? I mean those three construction parts based on work weft and knots. The work and weft is the same, the only difference is the knotting technique. The Persian types are using the single knot, what we do call zenne, and Turks are using the cordial, which is the double knotting technique. By the single knot, what we do is that the weaver master goes under the first warp, comes loose, makes a loop around the second one, and both edges are coming out separately. So when you do walk on your rack, or when you vacuum it, or if you have pets in the house like I do, which can scratch or chew on your rack brand, what happens, the person pulls one or the other side and you lose your knot with time. But by the double knotting technique, we go in between two words, we make a loop, bridge, loop, and we come up here. So both edges are coming together, so your rugs get stronger with time. That's the main difference. And how long do these rugs last? Actually, the oldest rug which is still surviving on this earth is right now in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, and it's approximately 2300 years old. <laughs> That's a bit mature. Yeah. yeah. Could you tell us anything about the patterns that are in these and what they represent? Sure, with my pleasure. Uh, actually, there are three types of knotted rugs. And to give you an idea, I will start with the story rugs. The story rugs are built by nomads in villages. And this rug here is coming from the south coast of Turkey, from a city ah! which we do call Antalya. Antalya. We're going there. We're going yeah. there. Yeah. Antalya is very famous because of the beautiful beaches, spring break, of, uh, spring break parties, and the golf clubs. But the second reason why it is important it is a very small, tiny village which is inside of the space, which we do call. Demre today, but the old name, which was actually pronounced in the Bible, was known as Mura. Mura. And Mura is the birthplace of Saint Nicholas, of the bishop. And we Turks have entered into this place roughly about 900 years ago. And 900 years ago, when we have entered into this place, we Turks, we were not Muslims. We were shamans, just like the American Indians. I like much. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at that time, a shaman girl started to respect all the good things what the bishop has done. So she wanted to tell her appreciations. But the problem is she couldn't read and write, so what she did, she gathered little symbols together to communicate with the people who could see those rugs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about the symbols, and I will tell you the full story about this. Can we right sit now. on it? Please, make it comfortable for yourself. So, what is, what are the designs in this rug? Here in the center, we see the one, two, three dominant Christian crosses where this girl wanted to tell that we shamans have respected Christianity and St. Nicholas in the past, we do it in the present, and hopefully we will do it in the future time too. 
but because we were shamans, so shamanic designs are more common in this rock, it's more dominant with them. Like for instance, here we have a pattern which we do call the hand on hips. I know, when in the States a lady has her hands on her hips, that means like, run for us, run for the partner. <laughs> But the second reason is when she gets pregnant, she gets volume she's not used to, so with gravity she bends and she gets back pain. To release the pain, she puts her hands on her hips and she stretches herself. It shows fertility for us. Or do yoga on this rug. Possibly. <laughs> but then I would suggest the silk rug. It's a lot easier than that. And here on the sides we have little wings because we believe in our culture that a mother is an angel. And so she symbolizes herself with the wings on her sides. Little camel footprints on the bottom. Because when you're a nomad, you're wandering according to climate from a place to another place. So what you're doing, uh, you're using camels for this. And because a female is not as strong as a male, she had the permission to sit on the camel and the man had to pull the camel. The queen in the house. And aside of them, we have scorpions. The scorpions actually stand for pride and protection. And in our culture, for Turks, we do actually believe that the man's first priority is to protect his woman, and according on how good he protects his woman, his pride level is going to increase. And that shows the power of a man in a shaman family. What else do we have here? Leafy thingies. Uh, those leaves are actually olive leaves. Not the leaves, but the branch for the olive stands for peace in many cultures. On the corners we have, on the borders, little stars, which stand for the start of David, a Jewish program. One, two, three, four, five small boxes shows that a good Muslim should pray five times a day. And a bad Muslim sells rugs instead of that, I guess. Oops, don't tell anyone. Just like same shit. So yeah, with this girl that she, she combined four different religions into this one rug. What else do we have? I mean, the colors are very important because white is the color of purity, green is the color of Hope, blue is the color of friendship, red is the color of love and passion. When we look deeper into this rug, we're going to see one, two, three, four flowers in the middle. And here we have the sun pattern. So what she was trying to tell us about 900 years ago was that she was hoping that one day will come that all those four religions will get united under the same sunlight in pure friendship, pure love, and pure peace. I was going to say, even before you explain that, that I feel like this rug to me represents oneness. And I love that I even see the eye of protection in Indeed. here, which we see a lot throughout this country. Yes, I mean, yeah. uh, like superstitious beliefs are very much in Turkey, but we try not to show them out too much. <laughs> well, it's okay for this show, because it's Indeed. holistic, right? Mind, body, spirit, Definitely. and esotericism. So. so actually, it was the right right to pull out to give you the sort of yeah. darkness. No, I super appreciate the download, and you better call me when you're in Jersey so we can come visit your warehouse in Rutherford. With my pleasure. Yeah, and do you have a website, or where can we find you? Actually, the problem for us is that we do not expose anything on the website because uh, we have some little problems that people from different countries, I'm not going to tell the names right now, that they do make those pictures and actually copy them and bring them on the market. Like for instance, this pattern is about 900 years ago and we try to keep this for ourselves because it would be unrespectful to the person who has actually created this. So we don't So it's super it. exclusive, but also it ties into how you recommend to choose your rugs to go with your furniture. Is that, Definitely. how do you suggest well, that? I mean, actually what we do is we do suggest people to buy their rugs with love, like choosing a partner. I mean, you do choose your partner. How how do people choose their partner? First thing, they look visually after that, they get into skin contact. And the third thing, they check the wallet. And that should be the same system here. Choose their rug like this, and not just because of, they think it's a combining piece of furniture, they should buy it because they love it. Or yes. don't buy anything. Yeah. So uh, where my family comes from, they cheers and they go salute, and they go dinero um, y amore. And I say amore y dinero, because I believe love should come first. Indeed, that's, that's the thing. And love is the most important thing in your life anyway. All right, Sammy, let's close smooches. See you guys. See you guys.